Hello and welcome to the Four Horsemen. Gentlemen, how are you doing on this beautiful, beautiful December night, December 6, 2021? Gentlemen, good evening. Good Hello, evening. sir. Joey, how you doing tonight? Very good. Jason, yourself? Good, good. Joe, it was Joe, it was, it was 70 degrees today. You got the hat on, you got the, 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 the vest on. It was 70 degrees, December 6. But the problem is, um, we don't have heat in our house, so it, it, it cooled down. My, wife, a little ah. <laughs> my <laughs> wife won't, you know. I got to bundle up. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> Vinny, my guy, how are you? How are you? Good, very good, buddy. Tom Boy, I have to how say, God rest your soul. When I was a kid, we had the old spin dial, and if it's at seventy, if you touch that. And you moved it one one <laughs> green. You gotta bet you, you gotta see you gotta see your maker right. real quick. But I'm well. Nice, oh, nice. Definitely. Yeah, but let's let's dive right into it. Let's dive right into let's it. Go. Got a lot going on in the world. A lot going on in the news. A very popular subject is Alec Baldwin comes out. He's had the interview last night with Diane Sawyer, right? With Diane Sawyer. Mm -hmm. And no, uh, I didn't see that one. I saw the one with Stephanopoulos. He did one with Sawyer too. Um, well, who was the host last night? I think it was. Sawyer. I didn't see it last night. I saw oh, the I one he did with Stephanopoulos. Either way, you're yeah, Jason. Be Jason, one's a female, one's a male. I could see, and probably a, a no, thirty year age difference. He, he no, he might have did an interview with whoever Barbara Walters or whatever. I don't know, but um, I no, saw George the one. This was last George week. Stephanopoulos and yeah, Stephanopoulos Sawyer. was last week. Okay, yep. Makes sense. So we want to we want to talk about Alec Baldwin saying that he did not pull the trigger and that the gun, the weapon went off on its own. And it just so happened to go off on its own as he was appointing it directly at the person. Right. It didn't go off on its own while he was bringing it up from his hip to where he was pointing it. It didn't shoot him in the foot or the leg or hit the ground. It literally went off amazingly directly at that poor girl who, who inevitably passed away. Gentlemen, Vinny, I'm going to start with you. What do you think about that? Uh, a gun going off. It's a revolver. You pull the trigger. It goes off. Not an automatic weapon. It doesn't have a magazine in it. Right. You got to pull the trigger for a gun like that to go off. What's your opinion? I think that's the problem with these guys have and girls have. They if they just told the truth, eventually everything will be okay. But now he can't come back from that because if he says, "Oh well, I," you just said you didn't. And I don't know. He you would think he has a PR person or a legal team talking to him saying that's what they. That, what he does. Said. That's exactly what he that does. Is, uh, that's I, I, exactly I, what he said. The thing is this. The question is. Is he responsible for her death? He didn't intend to do it, but he has to bear some responsibility that he handled the gun and the gun was faulty or whatever, but he had it in his hand and it went off. Well, let so me that's ask the question. question. Let me ask you something. If you're driving a car and the wheel flies off or you break an axle and you hit someone standing at a bus stop and kill them, are you still responsible, even though it was total accident? You didn't plan on the braking. You were driving the speed limit. Axle. Yeah, you are. You, you are responsible. You are not not criminally. It's not as a crime, thing. but right. you're responsible as far as insurance civilly. You have. Yeah. You're going to have to pay. Pretty much the same thing, isn't it? Possible no, that's not the same thing. Possible manslaughter. That's completely different. Why? Because you. He had a gun in his hand. Guns kill people, or yeah, people but it kill people. To be but, loaded, though it's supposed to happen. But a wheel falling off a car—that's not supposed to happen. You know, the gun was loaded. It was on the set. There was live ammunition in there. He well, has to bear some to be of that responsibility for it. But there wasn't you know, supposed to be live ammunition in it, right? No. Not right. At all. So not at all. he no. didn't know that there was live, or he wouldn't have shot her. Well, what do they tell you? I have my hunting license. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Joe, when you're you, the gun when, guy. Give us the when, gun. When you knowledge. handle a gun, okay? Mm -hmm. When you handle a gun, I was in the military. You can't, you can't go off the word of someone handing you the gun. You they tell you the exactly. Chamber. Like, like you have responsibility when someone hands that to you. You got to say, "All right, now 
what do I have here? Oh, it's not loaded. Okay, click. No. But, Joe, no, they, you're a gunman. Now, if Alec Baldwin opened up, do bullets look the same as squibs? Like, if he opened I, up the chamber, right, it could be squibs that look like real bullets. Do they look differently? What's because a squib? You know about guns, right? Okay. How would you know if they're real bullets or not? Well, the diff. Well, yeah. Well, the blanks, the gun blanks don't different. have the point, right? right? So a, a blank will go off just like a gun. Just it's the same, almost same feel. Um, right. You know, smoke up, whatever. You know, the way it discharges, everything's the same except obviously there's no bullet. Okay, um, it's just a blank. Was it, so so it was, hold on, military, Jason. So where the gunpowder so sits, gun guys. where the gunpowder sits, right? You know the yellow part. Let's say a bullet. There's like a yellow portion of the bullet. Right. And then, in, um, and then in front you see that silver, or you see a red portion. So that portion's the bullet, and that gold portion where the gunpowder is. Right. So we on the blank, you won't have that front part, whether it be silver or red. Okay. The bullet, the actual bullet part that flings out. Okay. Because that gold portion, for most people, they think gold when they think of a bullet. That gold portion doesn't fly out of the gun. Okay, it either on a revolver it'll stay in there, or on an you know on a machine gun or automatic or M M M sixteen, which we had in the military, it'll just pop out of the out of the uh, magazine or out he's, of the weapon. Um, he's but, saying when he cocked it, right? When he cocked it, yeah. But the back of it, it'll look the same, similar. Yeah. No, I understand that, but what I'm saying is he cocked the gun, right? Yeah. Now, it in my eyes, if you cock that gun. And when you let off that, you know, the hammer, if it's going to go off, the person that has the gun should know that. Okay. Yeah. Like, like certain guns, there has to be one in the chamber or there doesn't. I mean, I don't know about all types of handguns, but they're different type of guns. And as someone that's holding the gun, you should know like, all right, it's a hair trigger. You know what I mean? Or you need to add seven pounds of muscle for this one yeah. or whatever it is, you know, like pull them and back. Think about this, Joe. And Joe has a good point here, guys. And Tom, maybe I want you to comment on this. Don't you think when Alec Baldwin is given something to drink on set, like if he's going to drink coffee or whatever, like he's supposed to be pretending he's drinking like a Jack Daniels. Don't you think he's going to try chest it out and see if it's iced tea? Oh, so it's really not. Jack like if he's doing like a stunt where he's jumping off something, don't you think he's going to tug? on the harnesses to make sure he's locked in? Yeah, Why didn't he do that with this weapon? Well, Why didn't I, he double check? Like, people double check the food on the set. The well, drinks here's my the question. Set, here's my harnesses. question. Here's my question. Was there a live charge? What actually happened? There was a live charge? Or I know even with blank, something could come out. What? No, what no. Happened? It was a bullet. It was a, it was right. a bullet. Okay. I, the little that I know, the little that I know of the situation is, one, there was like a union strikes. I think they were, um, what are they called? Scabs or what do you want to call them? non-union people i'm not sure if that's true or not then number two is um is uh he didn't like yeah he didn't check it like i think a reasonable person if we were in court i think a reasonable person even if it wasn't a live charge if they're going to practice they would probably shoot at the ground or there might be some type of area to test it out or into maybe a, a vestibule of some sort so to, to, to lift this up and to shoot it and just be like this that's fucking careless. I don't care who you are. That's now, what Joe, I'm saying. It's yeah, careless. And Joe, Joe's a gun guy. I know you use shotguns. I, I'm working on my license. I go to the range once in a while. I even myself, the little that I know about guns, I feel the difference of when bullets are in there or not. So if you hand me a gun, you can tell. So in my opinion, I think it's negligence. Now here's where it gets tricky. Yeah, I don't have a law degree, but here's where it gets tricky. He is an actor that did it. But he's also an executive producer. So bare minimum, bare minimum, he's on the hook civilly. There may be a criminality to it, too, in manslaughter as well. Now, as Why a, is there a loaded gun someone, there at all on a movie set? Because t maybe they were shooting, t it was target practice or whatever. But what I'm trying to say is he pulled back the hammer. He cocked the hammer. Here's what I know about guns. Yeah. Do you know about that gun? If you can give a un the un gun, they gun. they yeah. said that he had to have he didn't he couldn't have he didn't have to squeeze the trigger, okay. But if he had his hand and he had the trigger depressed, okay. So if he squeezed the trigger and then cocked it, right? 
that type of gun clicks. When they pull the hammer back a little, it clicks. Pull it back a little more, it clicks. The only way it's going to come forward is not if you squeeze the trigger, but if you had your weight hand on the trigger, it would go and it would, you know, send the projectile. But my whole point is you really have to know the gun that you have, because I know if I'm cocking a hammer on a gun, I might, I'm saying to myself, man, if I let off this hammer, the gun might go off because when you shoot a gun, what happens? The hammer gets pulled back. And when it gets to a certain point, it goes forward. So if you pull it back and let it go, that hammer is going to go forward. Why would you think it wouldn't shoot in a so, revolver? So what you're saying is that it was purposeful, is what you're saying. He didn't. In, he probably didn't intend to no, do no, it. No, no. What I mean, purposeful, not on purpose. Meaning, like, like I shot revolvers. You have to like. It, right. It yeah. was exactly. So if you let's you say you squeeze the sometimes. trigger. Like and pull the like, hammer. Again, if you don't have enough strength, like maybe like a teenager right. or a young woman, and you don't have ever done it before, they have trouble pulling that trigger. Right. They have trouble. Jason, you have Brandon to Lee, squeeze it. You have to. That is an action. But Brandon Lee, other people, what? Why are there guns allowed on? If you went into a baseball game, you could not carry a gun. Atlantic City can't carry a gun. Why on the movie set is there loaded guns allowed? That's what I don't understand because this has happened before. Now, let me ask you a question. He's also very political. Go somewhere else he, and go to target practice on a movie. He's, all, he's, doing he's, he's, practice. he's also been pretty vocal politically. Do you guys think that comes into play? Definitely. Yep. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Oh, oh yeah. I really didn't like and what also, he was I didn't like what he was doing with Trump. And the reason why I didn't like what he was doing, it's one thing. You know, if you're a comedian, but but he hated the guy. You know what I mean? Like he just you could see it. It wasn't like, you know, Jerry Lewis or someone, you know, making fun of the guy or like Dana Carvey doing President Bush. Yeah. This was like, man, I'm, I hate this dude and I'm going to expose him and his shenanigans. It was just like two guys. There's just no respect for people. And it Joe. starts there. You know what do I mean? It's like you guys think there's any difference now that is attorney because this will be a tremendous civil suit. Absolutely. Oh, they've already you think it, yeah, no. you think the they're lawyers suing him, the studio, they're suing everyone. So is that why the lawyer was saying to Alec Baldwin, yes. you say you didn't do it? Yeah, yeah. So because so, once so, you so, say yeah. it, there's yeah. 10 million out exactly. of your pocket. So there, right. there's there's um and listen, I can't pretend to be one but he also one. said he didn't feel guilty. Right. That what? was fucked up. What? Yeah. So yes. he said, do they go, do you feel any guilt? He goes, no. Yeah. So, so. Oh, because then it's actually like he tried. Yeah. If he doesn't feel guilty, it's like, I, I had no idea what happened. If you say so guilty, you feel guilty. I'll give you, I'll give you what, I'll give you what happens at that level. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's got like probably unlimited resources. Right. So number one is right off the bat, they'll have a crisis management team. Okay. Number one, you have a legal team, not just a lawyer. And two is you'll have um, a crisis management team on PR, one to monitor social, one to monitor message, messaging, one to uh, create news and different spins. So, you know, one, the whole him going to the family, it was he was advised to do that. So you have the people who say if he, if he didn't give a shit, he wouldn't have been to the family. Number two, the messaging, they got to control the message, right? And there's always like, and it's got to be like crazy, like, I don't feel guilty or, you know, because if I don't feel guilty, you're not guilty, you right? You're doing wrong, yeah. 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 Then the whole going to Starbucks the next day. That's all. How can that guy no, go yeah. to Starbucks? Because we're getting away from what. So here's what happened. Look over so here. he was directed to do all this stuff. No shit. So yeah. his that was manufactured with George Stephanopoulos. On top but of it, they get questions ahead of time about what's in bounds and what's out of bounds. And you bet your ass that publicist and that um, lawyer got the questions beforehand and he rehearsed the answers. But they, but they, 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 they're messing him up. They're not, they're not doing right. And let me tell you something. These Hollywood lawyers and publicists, they forget what real people, how they act, think and act. They live Absolutely. in that, that glam lifestyle, okay? They forget how real people think. And by the way, real people are going to judge this man at the civil case yeah. and if there's a criminal case and by this man not saying 
listen, I am so I feel so guilty for what happened. Yeah. Do, do I feel that that I didn't mean for this to happen? I feel horrible for this ha to happen, Benny. If I if I'm walking next to you and I trip you by accident, I oh, feel I'm guilty, sorry, man. Yeah, I feel I guilty for tripping Jason, you. Oh my god! I don't think he Listen, went. I don't think Alec, he said that though. Alec Baldwin. I think he did. did. He said he don't feel. He said no. I don't feel guilty. So, you know he, he feels said, bad so, for her though. He feels. Listen, he, there's there's no way in the world he's a dick, Alec Baldwin. There's no way in the world. That inside he's probably devastated about this. Oh, no. that's what I'm I think saying. He's devastated, and they're saying, "Go no, and you go to Starbucks. You smile at the cameras. You act like you did nothing wrong." Like you said, Tom, if it didn't happen, I didn't do it. And exactly, as soon as he says, "I'm devastated," why did you do something wrong? You're absolutely right, Tom. It's like you, you don't. You always could see you know, he was you know, right. so yeah. right. Joe. Well, these husbands who get accused of killing their wives. And if the guy was going out to Starbucks, you know what they say? Look at him. He doesn't even care. He's going out to Starbucks. Scott Peterson. Scott Peterson. I thought he said that he doesn't feel responsible for it. I know. Oh, I oh thought... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, Joe, you're that's right. That's difference. I got to take this back. Oh, I'm sorry, different. guys. I got to take that back. He said, I don't feel responsible. Well, that's a big difference, that statement. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He feels bad. But oh, he's sure he just of course. well. He should also feel some responsibility. He was the producer. He was also uh, the actor who pulled the trigger. Yeah, but if they're what they're gonna try to do is they're gonna try to get people out there and plant them on certain media outlets. For example, right. it'll be the head of I mean I don't know what the title is, but the head of props for studios. It's the responsibility of the prop team. Not the talent to blah 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 of the blah right. blah blah and the blah yeah. blah blah. So they're gonna try all their shit. At the end of the day, he's on the hook civilly as Alec Baldwin as the EP. Yep. And and I'm trying not to let personal opinions get in the way. But somebody lost their mother, right? Um, their yep. daughter, their sister, and I do feel their wife. Like, yep. I do feel there's a certain level of negligence. And I can't imagine there's not some type of manslaughter involved. Tom, does this come out of his pocket, all these civil things, or does he have insurance to cover him? Well, like so, so, so again, there's different levels. Him as he, an, an actor may be on the hook. Him as an EP, really? there's typically insurance. However, if there's negligence, there may be some rider or something that says, hey, if you're negligent, um, you know okay. what? Like, 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 we can't help you. And no yeah. insurance companies, they're not going to want to pay. Remember, you have... You know, remember, like it gets it gets dicey. You're and this is real. You're a um a grip on the set. You know, you're holding the mic and you're a key grip, and you witness somebody die. These are like actors and artists. You yeah. know, not three people, and they get legitimate PTSD. It's not a joke. Yeah, sure. yeah, you know? yeah. So, all right, guys. Well, moving on. That was. Well, it. wait. I have one other thing that I want to say. Yeah, go, right. ahead. So, go ahead. Before we move so, on. So, so let's say. And this could be wrong. We might have to edit this out of the show. But, okay, so what happens if, like, all right, so we're doing a scene in a car, right? And we want to make it look like we're going to, I'm going to run someone over, right? So the person says, all right, look, you get in the car, okay, and you hit the gas as hard as you can, but it's in neutral, the car is going to rev up and it's going to sound like you floored it and that you're going to hit the person in front of you. But in reality, when you get in the car, it's in drive, you gun it and mow down the person in front of you. Isn't it your responsibility when you get in a car to make sure that that gear is in the park position or uh -huh. right? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. so isn't it his responsibility when he got that gun to yes. make sure yes. that, all right, I'm not yes. pointing it at people. I'm not cocking it back. I, I know if I, I cock yeah. it back and let off the hammer, it's going to release. So so what responsibility does he bear for this? That's my hope. Can I, can I, that's a great point, Joe. Really quick. I have a question to the panel. Um, Arizona is a concealed carry state. Um, it's very gun friendly. Very, yeah. Um, I'm just going to give two points. I can see one, because they're gun friendly, not off the hook, but maybe we'll be empathetic or opposite. You know what? We're serious about our guns, and those people that mishandle guns should, you know, right. I think this is more Joe's wheelhouse. Uh, I, I, I say the, I say the, near the ladder. 
Yeah. And the burden of proof for a civil case is a lot less culpability than a That's criminal right. case. Absolutely. So he, so, yeah. because mm -hmm. truthfully, his actions caused that woman's death just yes. by picking up the gun. Yes. So if he didn't pick up the gun, she would still be alive. So you got to, who do you really blame? You know what yeah. I mean? I understand his point, but. The last thing I just want to—I know we want to move on, Jason. How much does this hurt Alec Baldwin's career going forward? Career? Yeah. If they find any negligence, which they may, I think he'll be fine. My wife says he'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because he didn't pull the trigger, and there's somebody yeah. that's supposed to right. be responsible. Yeah, I think so. And he's a—he's a big name actor. A year from now. The guy, I can't remember the. We're, hold on, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna. Sorry, Jared, let me cut you off. We're gonna change Jason's box. I don't know if I can to J Lib. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding, <laughs> Robin. We love you. We love you, Robin. <laughs> um, yes, Robin. We love you, Robin. We love you. We hate him. I don't know your husband. I don't know about him, but we love you and your children. You're all beautiful. Oh, I love you. All, all right, right Seth, Capital so next week. Uh, I think Alec Baldwin will uh, – his acting career won't be affected, um, and I think his pocket will be heavily affected. When is the first skit on Saturday Night Live about this? Yeah. Oh, they won't. They love Alec. They, they won't be. They, As they say, too soon, my friend. They love this crap. Too soon. Damn, yeah. No, they love Alec Baldwin. He's, he's been on that show 20 you know. times. They ain't going to do know. nothing against him. So, all right, gentlemen, moving on. Labor shortage, a lot going on with our economy. Some people think uh, our economy is it's doomsday coming up. It's going to be another 2008 or worse. I agree. Okay? I agree. Or yeah. worse. Um, but right now we are dealing with a labor shortage, a big labor shortage. And we're going to lead this one off with Tom. So, Tom, let's get into this. Um, I'll lead right I'm now gonna, with I'm the gonna, I'm going to say my my piece, and I'll be able to hear you guys. I'm going to need a bourbon for this one. Um, so, I, I, you know, I've been saying this privately. I haven't really did many shows on it. I'd rather say it now on the Four Horsemen. I believe the labor shortage is going to cause another economic crisis, and I'll give you kind of the quick reason why. So, the, the jobs that retail – hospitality, um, the jobs that are considered less paying and really a lot of thankless jobs per se, but they're real jobs, right? Mm -hmm. What's happening is people can't fill those spots, right? And when they can't fill those spots, you either have to pay more, you have to pay better retention, right? You have retention tools or you have to close. Um, I was coming home from the city one night for dinner, my fiance, now my wife, um, wanted me to pick up some fast food for a 930. Clark, New Jersey is a strip of five fast, fast food places. All were closed, right? So now what happens is closures hit your, your top line and bottom line. Increased wages hit your bottom line. Retention hits your bottom line. So you got to do two things as a business owner. Either raise your prices, which is inflation. We're seeing this with gas. Or, which is kind of another discussion. Or you have to um, make less margin or lose money, which you can't do at a long clip. Because you're running a business and that's going to spill over into the corporations and that's going to spill over to the broader economy. And you heard it here in the four horsemen is going to cause the next crash. What is the like inflation each year? It's like, uh, like it's CPI a is like number. Yeah. CPI is uh, consumer price index. Three, three percent a lot. So what's six, it this six year? Percent. Six, six percent. percent. 6.3, I think. 6.3, 6.4. And a lot of, and, and one, a lot, nobody is getting a pay raise. To, first of all, right. let's get into that. Social security. Inflation, right. every Social security money. went up 6.9. Which, which beat the inflation rate, which yeah, is but amazing. The problem is, the problem is if you have social security and you pay for insurance, that premium each month is going up. So right. you're going right. to not, it's not going up 7%. It's going up, you know, maybe 20, 40 bucks a month. But nonetheless, that increase will be ate up by every, you know, you're still not yes, living. Yeah. You're a W-2 employee. You ain't getting no increase. And if you you're did, it ain't no 6%. People to stay home. Jason, if someone sends you money on a regular basis through Western Union, is that taxable income for the person that's getting it? 
it depends. You can give money to, I can give, you're my brother or whatever. You're my friend. Right. I can gift you up to, I believe, 14000 I think Tom knows the exact amount. No, but I can yeah, gift you 14000 So if I'm sending you money, Western Union, because you live in California, I can gift you. Now, as soon as I exceed that $14,000, you are going to have to report that. Right, because I send Union, if you have 30 different names sending you money, and it exceeds 15000 after the year. Is that what it is? Okay. That's not one gift from well, one the person 14, like a brother. Okay. The 14000 right. 14, goes from... Uh, parent to child. What? What? Let's talk about. Let's say that our world here in YouTube. If Vinny gets a a uh, 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 a super chat, or he gets a cash app, if he gets makes over six hundred dollars a year, he will get a ten ninety nine or more a ten ninety nine from YouTube. If he gets uh, 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 money brought to him from cash app privately, there's a chance he can get. A 1099 from Cash App uh, if it's over six hundred dollars. Tom, if I make ten thousand on YouTube no. and they're taking thirty percent, am I getting taxed on that ten thousand income? On the net, you know? on the net. On the net. Yeah. So a seventy percent of the oh, okay. Right. I now, think Tom, I think it, it doesn't have to be parent to child. I think you I can gift even you. Yeah, guys. there's a there's a peer to peer gift amount. I'd be lying if I knew. Um drop in the comments if you know. Um probably probably uh Hopefully there's a CPA out there. Right. Uh, Jason, Jason, would you shoot me a quick loan app from your company? I think yeah. I need something. I got a sure. question. I got a question though for Vinny. Uh Vinny, I want you to wear the Wall Street hat. Yeah. Uh, I'm more of a business guy. I'm not an investor. I wasn't ever a Wall Street guy. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a small business guy. You guys hated inflation. You guys ran for the sure. hills out of uh, sure. equities. Absolutely. Uh, and so give us give us why. And then where's the money go as inflation increases? As well, the, the the problem with inflation is it's a, a whole circle. Inflation, stockbrokers. The reason why the New York City was terrible during the the stock crash two thousand seven is you got guys who usually get. Think of all the bonuses the big stockbrokers get: ten million, mm -hmm. twenty yep. million. Add all that up, yep. New York State's not getting any tax on it. Tax revenue. You're not yeah. taxing them because they didn't make it. So there, the money. Yeah, you, know, you try to go overseas. You try to go. I used to put people into uh, overseas, build uh, different cities. But the problem is that just the confidence, it, it is so, it's not even cyclical anymore. It's that people are so afraid. It's media destroys the market now. Yes. Back in the day, now people scared about everything. You hear one thing, it's so volatile the market to go down three hundred points. What about mortgage rates, Jason? Do you like? I, I mean, like so. Usually, the C. I remember out of Joe, Joe and I are the same age. Remember CDs were like five percent in the bank, and Vinny, when I was young, I remember I young, when the money 14%. market eighteen percent. Yeah, yeah, late 70s, 77, 78. I, I, like eighteen I, to nineteen. I, I knew an old Italian lady who put like a lot of money in there before she passed yeah, and I locked in over ten years. And they got to honor it. Um, well, how do you think people who didn't make a lot of money, non-college graduates, non-high school graduates, and we'll use the Italians because I am, I feel I can do it. An old attack, my, at the time, my wife's father, not a janitor, but something like that. No. Four kids through St. John's, yep. a house that was worth 900 paid. Okay, yep. she bought it for 50 Never stopped, but these people didn't go to Lugas on a Friday night. They went out once a year, but they were putting everything away and they're getting 18, mm -hmm. 19 percent on that money. Can you I remember five percent was a lot when I first got when I first started dating my wife and we got serious, we actually opened up an ING direct account. Oh, inter oh, and we were and we were getting close to four, I think, or even more than Damn. four. Then it just trailed down. Yeah, they were the first online savings and checking account. I so, 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 Jason, you're giving out commercial loans. I know residential loans. I the mortgage rates. Residential, we're at three five right now. It's three five. Oh, really? Residential thirty year average fix? is three five for, for a thirty year fix. You're at a three five right now. And, what was it a year, uh, year ago? At JC Capital, if you're an investor or a business owner, we're getting you rates um, very close to that. What was it, four and a half last year? Oh, uh, no. This time last year, well, October, a, a month and a half ago, 
Um, we were at low, less than two. People get two sevens, two eight, two nine. Yeah. How, do, this how does this it work? Was, I I don't know if this is you would answer this or you even know, but how do you um determine like if you want to refinance your home or whatever to get equity out of the house? How does that work? Like how much what how much do you have to owe on the house? Like it's like 80-20, you gotta be below 80%. I don't understand how that works exactly. Well, I think it might be lost. Yeah, I don't know, Jason answer. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jason. Yeah, so um I, I think it might be mixing um when you say 80-20 rule, something like that. So that is um your mortgage insurance. Okay, so now you don't. If you own twenty percent, or get twenty percent in your home, or above, right, less than you that, you need PMI, PMI, right, right. But my, I'm wondering, that is like, correct. how okay. do you know? Like, how would I know if I could get money out of my equity in my house? Like, how how does that work? Like, do they gauge? Oh, yeah, how so much you would get so, how much? so we would send it right. So you would come to me guy like me or a mortgage company and you would say listen i want to do a cash out refi okay so that means you want cash out of the refi right and right. um we would send an appraiser out and is this the, a good time to do that your home. i'm sorry is this a good time to do Question. that yeah it well again depending on the rate that you'll get now rule of thumb is if you're gonna save a point of the point that you of the points you have now you're going from a five five to a four five the answer is yes. Go ahead and do it. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. um, but also, Vinny, but Vinny real, quick, real quick, I think also, Vinny, forgive me. Yeah. You know, I'm wearing the same thing, right? I bought my house February 2020, two weeks for before COVID hit. I don't go by the Zillow estimates, but I do go by the comps. My house value is up 20% in one year. Does it make sense for me to get a new valuation? And like Joe said, maybe there's more equity value than i thought and if i want to maybe start a business or use money to, mm -hmm. to improve it is it a good time to do so jason because the value went up yeah of course and again but again listen you have to pay the appraisal okay so if you're saying to yourself listen i got 800 bucks my yeah. house yeah, this guy's right. house went off this guy's house you look at your neighborhood okay go right. on research your neighbor what houses are selling for Okay, how much they you went get a ballpark figure. Put you out the eight hundred bucks and do a cash. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and because again, going back to uh, Joe's question, we're going to send an appraisal. We're going to send an appraisal out, appraiser out. Right, they're going to get the true value of your home. So if your home's five hundred and you only owe four hundred, and you know maybe you need help with bills or you know just need cash because you know life happens, or you want to put you want to improve your life by putting an addition on your house or something. You know, go for it. It's well worth it. And you can end well, your sale. A client right now I have is going from a 525. Five. He's a business owner going from a 525. Five. We're taking him down. We're getting him with a 3.9. Three, uh, three right. No. Does it Another matter guy, how your credit is? What's that? Does it credit, matter how yeah. your credit rating is even for something like this? Yeah, or it depends. It your house? No, no. It depends. No, no. So they're going to – the if you're going to cash out – you know, you want to get equity from you. You want to get cash from the equity in your home. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you all can do it. <laughs> the interest rate, it's going to matter on your credit score. All right. So oh, we go down oh, to a okay. six. We, yeah, we go down to a 600. Typically, traditionally, they want to see you over a 650. But yeah. So if you don't you know, have good credit, it might not be worth to do it. Oh, 100%. If your it's credit took a dip in the past year or so, no, right. you don't want to do it. You want your credit. People think, oh, I own the house. I own it. It doesn't matter. It does matter if your credit isn't great. And and guys, let me tell you this too. If your income situation has changed, maybe you were somebody who was a W two employee, you made a hundred grand, and now you have oh, well, I got value in my house. I'm going to go refi. You know, the banks gonna look at well, what's your income? You're on Social Security now, right. even though you're paying your mortgage, even though you're paying it. The bank's not going to look at you that you're paying it. They're going to look at your income now. You can send them a check every month on time. Yeah, you went from 100000 to 50000 Okay? In your mind, you're still paying your mortgage. The bank don't look at it like that. The bank's going to see that fifty grand. You took a dip in pay. They don't care that you're paying them. And they're going right. to say, oh, we're not going to approve you for this, this refi because you're making Debt to, only debt to income ratio? 
Is that what it is? Debt well, to that's a figure. That's that income ratio, too, but it's also right. income in general. Less than 20%. But, but here, okay, so so let's say I wanted to, I need to redo a bathroom in my house, right? Or we not, we want to. We want to redo a bathroom. I want to put a bathroom upstairs, and there's a couple of other things I want to do. So I'm figuring 30 it's going to be, I'm figuring 50, Worst okay? Case, yeah, yeah. Right. So let's say it's 50, right? right? What should I do? Should I take it out of my savings and pay it, or should I try? Like, what could I do? No, I, I, I would, I would not take it out of your savings. I would hold on to cash, right? Right. Um, mm -hmm. And listen, borrowed money at the right at the right amount is good money, right? Right. Um, so I would definitely try to do it again. Research your neighborhood, your area, right. your houses. Do that on your own, so you can say to yourself. Hey, hon, we only owe 200 on the house, and this house looks like it could be about 500. We got about 300,000. I would 100% say you save on, you hold on to that, your savings, right. and you do a cash out refi. 100%. Is a, home, is a home equity line of credit, is that the same thing as a cash out? The HELOC? Well, well, again, line of credit is they allow you, they allow you X amount of, you know, to use. It's not really cash. What's that, a HELOC, right? Yeah. I mean, it works the same way. It does. I mean, you're taking so, the money. Yeah, right. right, because I don't know like what exactly. So, But uh, on a line of credit, remember on a line of credit, you're going to have that monthly fee to pay every month. So even if you don't use it, people think, oh, I'm not using the line of credit. No, you still got to pay the well, interest would, every month. You know, the, would, the reason why I yeah. – oh, sorry. The reason okay. why I'm saying this is because I'm at three and three-quarter percent right now. If you're saying it's got to be a point, take I don't think run, I could get hey, two and three quarters. So stay, what would I take, do then? Take it and run. Run run and be happy. Say yeah. thank you, may have another. Keep it. I'm at three and three quarter now. Yeah, but you need cash. Let's say you I want to redo some shit in my house. Right. No, so, so that's a different, no, but that's a different story. If you got the same interest rate, but you're getting cash out of the deal. Great, stay. I'm yeah, saying yeah. if you're only doing payment, you don't want any cash. I would tell you to stay where you're at. Don't move. No, that's what now I'm you asking. Want you. Cash. Now yeah. I'm saying if you got the same, if you're roughly around the same percentage, yeah. even if you're a tenth of a point or two higher, because you're getting cash to improve your life, right. I would say do it. Okay, so that's so, right. well, in your situation, it's not saving on it's not one point. But right right place, place. And also, Joe, that's what really I'm quick, asking. Okay. Also, Joe, really quick, in all seriousness, especially being in Staten Island, um, you have a home improvement, like a fixed bathroom, an additional bathroom. Just, and given the equity in your house probably went up or the value of your house went up, hence you know, your equity, you're probably obviously not upside down. So you might be better off either doing a HELOC for the 50K, right? Getting at the lowest rate possible. And then what I always like to do is I always, you know, you're, you don't have kids yet. What I like to do is a formula is six months in the bank of gross living expenses, right? In the bank with children, 10 months, multiple children a year. Um, and then you have that formula. So unless you, like if you're sitting on a lot of cash, it might make sense to do it yourself there. But if you have this situation where injury rate, rates are so low, you might as well, you know what, get the HELOC or refire with a cash out, you know? Right. Well, that's the whole thing is, you know, as far as children and stuff like yeah. that's going to happen soon. So you and like and I want to I want to have everything in the house done because right. right now where I'm at upstairs, I have three bedrooms up here, but we don't have a bathroom. So we so we live on the second floor. So um, being that there's no bathroom up here, not that it makes it uncomfortable, but we spend less time up here. We're not going to sleep up here and then have to take a leak. I got to go downstairs. I, I, tell you, I hope Heather doesn't say the man cave's gone now. That's the bit. No, 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 no. no. Uh, two no. investments <laughs> in a house, you're never going to go wrong. And Jason will tell you because he's more of a finance, housing finance background. Uh, bathrooms and cabinets, you'll, you'll never go wrong. Oh, bathrooms yeah. and kitchens. Yeah, and bathrooms and kitchens. yeah so that's the thing. I got to do the. I, I want to do the kitchen and two bathrooms. That's where I came up with 50. Now, now, really quick, though, really quick. There's two challenges, though. Now, you probably have some sourcing connections because of what you used to do, right? But if you don't, like wood's a little more expensive, materials more expensive. And then number two, listen, I'm going to be the first to say this. I just had a guy today 
come by the house at 300 bucks a day. He did like 20 grand. You told work. me about that, yeah, right? Yeah. I have somebody for you. But I will tell you this. This is me being an Italian guy from Jersey. It took me three years to find a guy. I, I know. have one, and I would love to send him your way. Let me I haven't found question. one. Ooh, yeah, uh, you, you would know this, you guys. Um, say you put a new kitchen, and you refinish your basement. So you've put 50000 in your house. If your house was worth five hundred before that, does it go up even more than the fifty that you put in? Absolutely. So what would you say if, if your house, if you put 50 into it, where 50 that not behind the walls, like where you finished basement, beautiful bathroom, what would you say the difference in the asking price would be? If it was 500 and you put 50 into it, if you're flipping it now, what would you ask for? I would say it would be the 50. I would say 75. To 100. You put 50,000. So you so make 25 to 50. Thousand on, on, the, on, oh. on your on that improvement. So really, if you own it, you're doing it for yourself. You're not yeah. a renter. You're just raising your value of your house. You can get you get on the extra money, and again, I'll acquiesce to Jason. Right. I think you can get two to one on every dollar. That's what now, I was wondering. Now here's the thing, though. So I I I, I know by me in Jersey, which is a little less expensive yeah. than New York. I think that if I want to have a guy guy or contractor come in. Then it cost me roughly two fifty a square foot, right? The value per square foot by me is about three hundred to three fifty. So the value of the house, I will make money on each square foot. Here's what I got to worry about: a reassessment. Tax. I already pay like twenty three grand in taxes. Right. I don't want to do any more. That's crazy. Right. The taxes are. I mean, taxes are you have better schooling, but that's a lot. Well, it's the, going up here too. In our in our district, specifically where we live, the um, the um, elementary school is one of the top in the, in the state. So that's everybody why I kind of live there. And the high school is pretty good too. So and then private school, as you guys know, is very. First of all, Catholic school is expensive. And oh, private yeah. school is even more. So it's kind of now. Meanwhile, I got, I got to pay for garbage. Not yeah. the schools, but garbage. Well, Garden City was like twenty five thousand, twenty eight thousand a year Woo. because of the. But I think if you don't have kids or something, you get a. There's a rate, I think. I don't know what that's called, but you get it. I have no school aged children, but I will. So that at least. Uh... Right. Because why would you ever want to move to Garden <laughs> City to thank for everybody's oh, no, school? I would move over one you, town over. Saying, kid, people that don't have kids aren't oh, no. going to have them. Why would they go to there? Jersey, which is one town over, and the taxes will be still high, but not as high. You get more for your house, but the school system is not as desirable. So that was Summit where we were. Good school system. <laughs> You would, you would, uh, the house, my house there would be worth 1.5 more, and my property taxes would be 35 grand. Really? Me and Vinny, we, we saw this business out there. I don't know who owns it, but, um, it'd be good to have a social club there, right? Then <laughs> they yeah. love us right next to the Starbucks. There you my, go. Uh, we go out old, there every my day. Old, my old cigar shop, uh, hey, Flores Tobacco, it. he operates as a social club. You pay a, uh, you pay a yearly fee. You pay for the box. I think it's like about a G a year. And uh, he kills it. He's a good dude. Too. I know. When I, was, Chooch. When, I, yeah. <laughs> when I was at Summit, I'm like looking around for a bodega. I'm like, man, I need a bodega. I want to get a drink or something. I'm like, I didn't know where to go. <laughs> well, you got you guys want to laugh. And you guys saw this story. The store small, right? So we, we went a little over, overboard on the, on the toys. So like it took a lot more space. Yeah. And like during the holiday season, that day alone, there was like 300 packages dropped off and another 300 shipped. I thought my sister was going to kill us. She's like, why did I? She goes, she was so happy that uh, we took yeah. up that much space with the toys. They came and picked them up. And living local in New Jersey. I saw the, Insta I saw the Instagram. Living, local, Instagram. living yes. local in New Jersey. Picked up our story and talked about the four horsemen over at the UPS. That was nice. Give a shout great. out to uh, what's his name, Jeffrey, right? The guy. What was the store? I had he gave me his, his name. Was Boy, Boy Professor. Oh, Boy and, Professor. And he's, yep. giving, he's giving his toys over to the UPS store to drop them off. Exactly. So we are literally tripling our stores. Yeah. Our stores. And and I, nice. I got to be honest, of all the things we did, don't get me wrong, the charitable portion was a lot. But if you go to Vinny's video, and we should maybe drop a link below, Vinny and I were asking him some questions. He was getting a little choked up. I don't know if I you saw that. that. Yeah. 
Yeah. And he gave it, he actually helped us out on the pricing on the stuff we bought, which yeah. gave us, he gave us a discount. So he that was, was so good. nice, Tom. He was so nice and Jay that we, we looked at each other at the same. This is how we have a connection. Yeah. We looked at each other the same thing. We said, let's buy it. Yeah. We bought a gift from, from me and him. Same time like a, we looked at each other. Exactly. Yeah. We, we didn't go to Walmart. You know, we didn't go to, and I'm not knocking any shareholders, but we didn't no. go to Walmart. We didn't go to, um, what is yeah. it called? Um, uh, a Target. We shop locally. A we mom and pop bought. local guy. Let's be honest. Great guy. Let's, we probably blew out his day. He probably was expecting, you know, a few hundred dollars a day. We came in and like, boom. No, we, and I, you know, you I know it would be cool if yeah. we did something like for Mother's Day, right? And we did something that like, you know, single parents or, you know, just, just get yeah. the woman to have dinner or do something for them. You know what I yep. mean? Yep. Where they have a night of just, you know, they could go out with their husband or whatever, or their boyfriend. Yep. If they're a single mom, they could, you know, just like yep. try to the help them out that come way. over and babysit. Right. <laughs> exactly. Many so, um, diapers. I, I well, definitely you know, think. You know, you know, my sister did. She, the one who runs UPS store. When things started going crazy with the pandemic and everybody started losing their jobs, she just like she is like the, the shop local person. That's why right. I had to go to her yeah. and mm -hmm. she handles like our charitable stuff. I'm like, who are we kind of working with this year? What are we doing? And that's she big, you know, beat a change in grace. Shout out to them. Um, so she she just put together, she goes, If you're looking for a job, send me over your resume. We'll get the best sheepskin, the best, you know, the best. 50 pound paper, whatever, whatever you need, I will print up 20 resumes for you. No questions asked, no charge. She didn't think anything of it. Got picked up by NBC News. It was crazy. Wow. We should do a clothing drive. That's a good idea. Yeah. Be good. It's so cold out now. Like my wife, we actually donated stuff to the animal shelters. Yeah. We donated all our old toys that were like pretty much new. Pet yeah. toys and blankets. They wanted blankets for yep. the dogs yep. because, you know, I guess it's cold or whatever. Yep. But I think because, you know, if we do clothes, it's not like taking money or anything. Right. It's right. just, you know, drop off a shirt or whatever, you know, something nice. Yeah. But just to help people because we're very you. fortunate. I yeah. have to tell you, I was starting to, the cracks were starting to show. People saw I was starting to get upset for the last three weeks because of this thinking of Daryl, the little guy, and the toys and all that. No. Uh, you guys, I I didn't really do it, but I wanted to thank you guys because you guys really got me through that day. Um, yeah. it, it's a hard day for me. It really I is. I remember that too. Guy, and you guys really, I never thought a day that could be so bittersweet would be so wonderful. And you guys are responsible for me really yeah. feeling like, hey, I got brothers. I never had a brother. Yeah. And I really, really thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's like I was telling you guys in the late 90s when I was out west, man, I was spending holidays alone. You know what I mean? Like I was spending Christmas Day alone, Thanksgiving alone. You know what I mean? Yeah, I could go to my friend's house, but I wasn't with my family. I had like at that point, I had no family. Now, Christmas gifts, I have in-laws and relatives yeah. my i get a ton of christmas gifts we have big parties on thanksgiving and new years and i have yeah. a family now yeah. you know and i almost say to myself i you know i could imagine what happens to people that like don't have that you know what i mean and there's a lot of them yep and um it's actually uh puts things in perspective that maybe we should start doing more charitable stuff. I'm totally with it if you want to. I, I like I also like the shop local aspect. I, I don't oh, yeah. I like the barstool, like too. the barstool fund. They raise like a lot of money for local businesses. So people, like patronize a local business. Right. And give them the business. And right. then take that and and use for charitable work. That's the kind yeah. of stuff that um, um, I we had to be at least, and this is below 30% more of what he was gonna make that day. More than that, yeah, because yeah. he wasn't bringing in four thousand. <laughs> I don't know if you watch the video. I got my bill, and although I, 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 I'm happy to do it. I was like, whoa, <laughs> but I was okay with it. I was okay with it. Yeah, and and I'm, I was happy. You're right. He did lose it a bit. 
Yeah. He did. He was. Yeah. He. I think he just saw that. Hey, there are people like us. You yeah, but ima imagine you're closed for sixty days, and you know, I, I, I don't. I don't know other businesses. And toys aren't and, essentials. People aren't running to buy toys. Well, Vinny, I can only speak for myself and both businesses. In my world, they're essential. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know about Jason what he thinks, but um, I keep two weeks. Of operating expenses in the, in each business, that's right. it. That's all I have in the operating in the operating accounts. Yeah. And if like something happens, I got to go out of pocket, right, to keep the business afloat. And when COVID hit. Oh, sorry, the c word because I don't want to get us banned by YouTube. Um, it was a rough time. Now, let me and ask I, you a question. You're a pretty together guy. Uh, how how worried were you with your business? Did you so think I um. I think I told this story, I think on the old podcast, and I think I told it with Jason. What happened was, you know, I have two businesses. I have a shipping business and I have the you know, marketing business. And um, what happened was usually I fuck it up. Usually I spend way too much money on the marketing side. Amex calls up and is like, hey, you spent too much. Give us some money. Or yeah. We're going to close you down. My sister is 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 uh, swiping through her UPS order, her UPS bill, and her card got declined. And she calls me up and she goes, what the hell did you do? I'm like, nothing. I, if anything, I'm on top of things on, on my side of the business. We're good. Um, she goes, well, I can't, I, I, if UPS doesn't come, we have to close our doors. We're at a business in one week, one week, we're at a business one. We're done. So I said, all right, let's call Amex together. Cause we have two different businesses, two different accounts. Amex gets on and goes, yeah, we froze your account. I'm like, okay. Um, on my X Factor Media, my bill was current and my levels were where they are normally. On her side, the bills were up to date and the levels were where they normally are. I'll be transparent. On both bills, we're looking at a $70,000 bill every month between both businesses. Yeah, Amex right? looks at your, your usual spending habit. They lowered it That's without telling doing. us yeah. and it gets better. They said, you know what? We lowered your amount. You need to pay not one, but both bills now in order to stay in business. I don't give a fuck how much money you have on hand. That's scary. I had to cut them a $70,000 check on the fly to keep my businesses open. 70 grand in one day. Best so, Buy did that to oh, me. No, no, hold on. Now, Jason, now, Jason has that in the shoe. I don't. Call JSV Capital for your business lending needs. Best Buy did that to Best Buy Visa. I saw that my account, my uh, available less. I said, why? Hey, what was not, afraid. not nice, what they did, they said, yeah, they said you know what? Your activity, we lowered your averages. Right. So I'm like, all right. And meant, no, we were current. I'm keeping it simple. If there was 30000 due on the 18th and it was a first, it mm -hmm. wasn't like, oh, just pay... The thirty thousand on the eighteenth, pay the thirty thirty thousand today, and not just for one business, for two businesses. Now, on the common denominator, meaning I own the credit cards for both businesses, right. right? But what I'm saying is, they were like for one business. Do it, 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 cleared, it cleared me out. Yeah, so I have the Amex, and yeah, I have the platinum. Cleared me and out. What they did was, I usually would spend four to five thousand a month. I try to put everything on it because you get points back. A couple of months, I put a thousand or two, and they look at what you're spending. And your basic, your credit limit is what your spending habits are. So if you spend seven thousand a month, maybe you'd have a twelve thousand dollar limit. If you right. put down to a thousand a month, your limit's five thousand. Well, and the reason That's why I jammed me up with twofold: the shipping business has notoriously low margins, right? Oh. So because you have low margins, if you wipe out your cash position, you can operate. On the marketing side, the margin's a little better, but you put out media buys and spends for other people. So now I had no money. Like I need credit too, meaning, hey, Vinny, I want to buy that Personal. gold award. Yeah. Great. Here's credit. If I don't have that credit, I can't do it. I, I literally almost folded both businesses in one week in March of last year. And that's now it. Did you, act, did, you, did you really tweak your business? program or because of knowing that could happen did you i, I did i would like out? to i would like to and i gotta see where to put it probably on either theory or mba 
Um, diversification saved my ass. I know it's obvious, you know, and, and we all agree, like, like Joe's in the card business, right? And there's a certain level of um, diversity you could have there, Joe, right? You can maybe mm-hmm. go certain years or right. certain ways mm-hmm. and, and there's some diversity. But in my business, you need different lines of business. So diversity saved my ass and diversity, I know is obvious. Don't put your all eggs in one basket, but the actual business model nowadays is do one thing, do it well, maintain a maniacal focus, and be the best at it. Fuck that. Diversity, say my ass. But we just we, got answered how you met JSV Capital. Now we have the answer. I, it was, well, <laughs> well, 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 what happened was it was a, there's a new app called Grinder for Professionals. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. So, I Tom, during the, during the, was there a point in time during the pandemic where your businesses were closed? No. So, um, the um well yes and no the shipping business was deemed uh essential right and mm, this, this, right. Where it, this is where it gets interesting i don't talk about this enough um we wanted to close we actually we actually wanted to i was right. worried about the safety of our employees um i personally felt is shipping like really essential but then it turned out that the franchise <laughs> said, you know what people are shipping medications yeah yes yeah, uh, shipping is very essential tom so, well, but the, you know, no, we, we wanted to close. We had us, we had to stay open. And, um, we, now uh, Tom, Tom was actually a hero because Tom actually went into UPS and worked, uh, a two hour shift. So he actually, he did. Oh year. my God. Oh, oh, did. Stop, did oh yeah. Yeah. I know. No, that he, o- he opened the door, went right. back home and then he closed the door at night. He went back. Right. And, and he, it's Locked an hour away from his house each way. So that's so where the, the two day, hours. The, the, the other day when, when I, after we got married and we're having a few drinks and my sister disclosed that we have 12 employees, I'm like 12 employees. What are we doing with 10 employees? I don't know why we have eight employees. <laughs> That's funny. Just kidding. Can you imagine Tom, him knocking at the door and him saying, listen, full disclosure, I've never done this before. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Tom, you have Tom, you have a no-show job there, right? Oh, yes. I will, I Your will, sister I, pays you not to come. There. I will tell you this. I will tell you this. So I purchased a magazine and I use a merchant cash advance to do it. And uh, I purchased a, a publication, and it was hyper focused in Hoboken. It was only Hoboken, in Jersey City. Literally three months after I buy, I buy that magazine that's in Hoboken only. Essentially, um, they're the first town in Jersey, and the, the mayor had like no authority, but he did a uh, shelter in place. Had no authority, but a shelter in place. That's new theory. No, New Jersey Digest, another one. I don't talk about it much. I don't want fucking people trolling my uh, yeah, my uh, writers. Which well, now they dub that. Oh no, oh no, my new theory, my new theory writers already got trolled. Oh really? So, oh yeah. Like, oh, like, I, like I have thirty-one year old female know it's writer ridiculous. got okay. trolled. They're like, are you part of the pizza army? Like, the fuck out of here. Are you what? Nuts? You know, there's another Bay Eighth. Did I tell Come you about on. that? So I was, I'm going stacks of show right. And I'm looking in the comments, and I see Bay 8th, and he's commenting, and he's, like, misspelling everything, and, like, and I'm looking, and he's, then someone says, oh, how you doing, oh, he was, bro? He was spot on with you. He was misspelling everything. Okay. Exactly, right. <laughs> exactly, right. And then he was like, um, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing any shows or anything because uh, I'm scared of this guy, Tony Pizza. He's got oh. me running or whatever. Yeah, and like, here's the rabbit so, hole. So now I ha- so yeah. someone said, wait a minute, man, your avatar, that's a blue B. I don't think they could copy the same color avatar if they use the same name. Like, is that uh, true? or? Well, the, well, your avatar is brown. Or not brown, red. Orange. Orange, orange, yeah. This was blue, and someone picked up on that right away. Well, I think I, this is some guy from a different country, from well, a, from well, a country well, that says Salem. I have to say, Joe, if you if you don't have haters, you ain't popping. You know that. Yeah, but these someone copying your name though feels a little weird to me. I, it's like a troll you know, is you know, one you thing. Know what, but, you know what there was for a minute? Armchair King. He actually was like a positive troll. I'm like, I've seen that. I, I thought that was you. I thought it was me too. 
Well, no, I actually, if it was armchair queen, it would have been you, but mm -hmm. king, I guess, okay. yeah. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Well, we touched on a lot today. I mean, we touched on Alec Baldwin, small business, uh, entrepreneurship, we mortgages. Had one more, no, or no? Um, what's that? We had one more. Well, evilized we Cuomo. Evilized oh, Cuomo. So let's 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 wrap this up, guys. But Hold let's on, just Vinny, talk, we talk we about Cuomo. We have live on Vinny's too after this. We talked. Right. To, we talked about uh, the Cuomo brothers um, on our last episode. Oh, yeah. Let's just touch real quick. Uh, With these new Chris allegations, Cuomo, Chris, Chris Cuomo is right. suing for eighteen million. Is he entitled he, to that, boys? If that it's was his, his contract, if that's his right. contract, but I think CNN wouldn't make maybe. Well, what's eighteen mil to CNN? I don't know, but I would have thought they had lawyers looking into it. He probably had a. A code of conduct clause in his thing, and maybe he uh they'll buy him out. Yeah, but he's they'll now he has the sexual harassment allegation. Did you yep. hear that one? Yep. I don't know how that is. Buy, Tom, would you buy out or would you go to court and fight it? Well, they do that to get a buyout, and um the only thing is if there are some allegations, obviously they don't want to pay it out, so they'll use that. Right. And Chris Cuomo is also a lawyer by training. So this will be interesting how it pans out. Mm -hmm. And he must have some amount of money through his dad or whatever. I would think. Well, I, 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 I was uh, I was wrong. His uh, his uh, stipend per year was six million. What did, What do you mean stipend? Well, he, what he got paid his salary at CNN six yeah. mil. Yeah. So what did you say? Have, huh? What's that? What did you say it was? You said you were wrong. You I thought it was three. I thought it was three million. Right, I wonder if Mario Cuomo, like when he died, like was he a hundred millionaire or did he have a couple of million? I don't know. Was he a big in business? He was a, like a career politician, but I know near the end he wrote books and yeah, you know he was probably you know you know this you serve in uh, governance and then you all of a sudden like you're on right. like, like I'll give you an example Giuliani, who does at a pharmaceutical company. Got 175 grand to speak for a half hour. So, right. you know, I don't know. You know, you don't know. Mm. Yeah. I, it's well, sad, I though, because it's um, his career at this point looks like it's ruined. And he's a young guy, too. Yeah. He'll be all right. He'll get picked up yeah. somewhere down the road two, three years from now. He'll be worth 40, 50 million. He'll do okay. We got to get him to JSV, uh, Loans Without the Broken Bone. He has the New Theory Podcast. Speaking of the small yeah, business, you know. small business, entrepreneurship, New Theory Podcast. Guys, come check me out on that. Uh, Jason's running the show. Yep, it's yep. my show. And uh, we talk about a lot of topics, but our main topics are um, business-oriented. All right. I've been trying to get on New Theory, but he's not allowing me. He thinks no, I'm you're dirty. dirty. You're coming on as a host. No, I want you to come on as a guest. Oh, no, hold on. You know what I want? I want the Imitation Bay 8th to come on as a guest and have you there interview them. There we go. There we go. Well, maybe right, we guys, should just hey. throw a topic in the air and have me and Jason yell at each other for 30 oh, seconds. That's good. That's some entertainment and there. And just click. I like that. Joe. Final words. Say goodnight to everybody, Joe. Let's end this. Final words is this episode tonight, there was a lot that went into it beforehand. And, uh, you know, we had a nice discussion. And uh, I think we worked through some things and cleared the air. Hell yeah. Um, and I want to say thank you guys for having me on as always. What are you, uh, you're, 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 you got to thank you. Uh, we got to thank you for having us on. Yeah, us. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. And no truthfully, himself, every time he brushes look, his teeth in the morning. So look, and don't believe the hype. Joe is a horseman. He'll always be a horseman. But remember, he's the headless horseman. That's and right. I just want to say one thing for anyone that's going to watch us, which I'm are, uh, don't believe comments that you see with Aaron attached. Unless you know we really said them, because there's a right. lot of. I, I just have one thing to say. Jason was talking about like the pink head and all that kind of stuff. 
So, so we had a few drinks at my house one day. We're watching like football. Like, oh, I want to show you like the purple crayon. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I don't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to be a fly on the wall when you two guys are watching football. All right, everybody. Football. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button. Subscribe. We Go love see you. Vinny. I'm the Brooklyn guy. Go see Armchair NBA. Go get Joey's phone number. We'll be giving it out at the bottom. No, the everyone has a number. <laughs> I'm do. I'm going to start I'm an eating show. New, new Theory Podcast with your host, Jay Venturelli. Guys, we'll talk to you later. Hope to see you.